I'm going to read verse 5, and my message this morning is going to kind of a, a two-parter. I'm going to kind of be speaking along the uh, same lines in the, this evening service, and so kind of um, uh, the, the two messages kind of go together that I want to cover. But look at Proverbs chapter 1, and we're just going to read verse 5. It says, A wise man will hear and will increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise Councils. The title of my message this morning is just Increase in Learning. It is important that we as individuals are constantly learning, that we constantly increase in learning. Many people, it's like they get this idea that, you know, after they're handed a diploma, they're done learning, okay? I mean, I, I, I kind of thought that, you know, after I graduated, good. You know, no more school, no more learning, right? But, uh, you know, that's actually not the way it goes. You know, learning is something that we should constantly be doing. We have no idea what is ahead of us in this life. We don't know what's down the road, what's going to come. We don't know what knowledge is going to come in handy. Okay, How many of your kids ever came home with homework and they're like, mom and dad, why do I have to study this stuff? I'm never going to use this in life. Well, how do you know? You know, what if the only job available in your town someday is to be the algebra teacher? You know, then you're going to wish you got good grades in algebra. You know, we don't know what God's going to want for us. We don't know what's down the road. And when we stop learning, we run the risk of becoming lazy. And the thing we forget about is that we tend to forget things, don't we? Okay. Now, how many of you, when you went to school, maybe you did, you passed algebra, but if you were to take an algebra test today, you'd fail miserably. I know that would be me right now. It's been it's been too long for some of those things. Well, I used to be able to st- I used to be able to stand there and I could tell you all the presidents in order. If you asked me to do that right now, I would mess up. I, I, I couldn't do that. Okay, I, I forgot. There's things that we learn, but we forget. Because one of the things I did growing up too, I just learned it. You know, I've always said I, we've got like different files in our brain. You know, and we've got. There's certain locations where we store information that are just there. It's just kind of a temporary file that empties itself later. And that's where I stored most of the information I got when I was in school. I just kept it in there in that spot in the brain where it stayed there long enough where I could pass the test, but then I forgot all about it later on. And so if we are not increasing in learning, you realize that means we're getting dumber, doesn't it? That means we're going backwards. And the Bible says a wise man will increase in learning. And uh, go, turn over to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And uh, we see here with Jesus as a young boy, at tw- as 12 years old. You all know the story about how they went there to Jerusalem like they did. And they left. They, for- they forgot him. He got left behind. And they finally they realized that they came back looking for him. And it says in verse 46, and it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And that when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, what is that? Why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said to them, how is it that you sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Jesus here, he's sitting with these wise men, and I don't know what happened. You know, I, I, in my head, I picture Jesus one day. He, he, you know, he does. He goes in the temple. There was just something that attracted him to that place. Maybe it was the fact that he was God, and he goes into that temple and he hears these men talking. And I don't know. Maybe he just asked them a question because you know he did as a, even though he was God. He was still a man and he had to learn. And he does, he, maybe he was asking them questions about the sacrifices. And when they were talking to him, it was clear there was something different about this young boy. No 12 year old asked questions like that. And not only was he asking questions that a 12 year old wouldn't normally ask, but you know, he's, he's getting it. He's understanding what they're talking about. And so for three days, I mean, You've got all these wise men. Hey, come talk to this young boy. And they're talking to him. And what he did, he's listening to what they said. He listened. He asked questions. Why was he doing this? He was trying to increase in learning. And you know, that's something we need to do. You ought to come to church and you ought to listen. But you know what else? You know, you know what encourages me as a preacher? 
I'm always encouraged. And, you know, don't do it in the middle of the service because then you throw me off my game and I'm going to get all mixed up. But you know what? I like when I get questions. Not necessarily when I'm questioned. You know, you got those, you know, there's always those people out there, they want to question everything that you say. But no, I like when people have some questions, especially when we're talking about something deep, because that tells me, hey, you know what? That person was paying attention. That person's thinking a little bit. And it's like, you know, it, it is, it's an encouraging thing when, you know, as a pastor and as a teacher, you know, you teach on something and then people do, you, you've got them thinking. And it shows that's somebody who's learning. That's somebody who's paying attention. And that's one of the main ways that we increase in learning is we listen. You know, a lot of times we're just way too quick to speak. Sometimes when there's a conversation going on, especially if it's about something that you don't know, you just need to listen. Hey, listen and learn. I like getting around other preachers. And I like just, I just like listening to the conversation sometimes. Sometimes I like listening to the, my wife. She likes to listen to the conversation of strangers. You know, we'll be sitting in a restaurant eating or something. You can kind of hear people talking and she gets this look in her face and, and I can tell what she's doing. She's listening to somebody else's conversation. And, you know, sometimes we do that. I think with her, it's not so much a desire to learn as it is, you know, she's nosy, but, uh, you know, it's, you know, you know, human nature, but, uh, you know, does anybody else do that? Besides my wife, all right. I'm sure she's not the only one. We listen to other people's conversations. Yeah, it does. It just happens. It's not. It's not our fault. Those people are talking loud, you know. And so they they invited us in that way. But you know, it is. It's good to listen. It's good to hear what somebody else has to say. Sometimes it's good to listen to another point of view. You know, as a pastor, I like. I want to do that. I like to know where people are coming from. I do. I like to hear people. I like to hear the questions. I like to hear what people have to say, and it is. Sometimes it's fun to just listen because you can can learn from that, and Jesus did that. He's sitting there, and he's listening to what they had to say, but then he's asking questions. Hey, why is he asking these questions? He wants to know more. I'd I'd like to know more about that subject. Let me give you all some advice here, too, all right? You know, how how do I decide what I'm going to preach on? Every service, you know, I mean, I, I got to get about four messages ready a week. Got Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, four messages ready a week. Sometimes the biggest challenge is what I preach on this week. And you know what? I go wherever the Lord leads, I guess you could say. And if the Lord doesn't lead anywhere, I talk about stuff that I like to talk about. I, I talk about stuff that I think is interesting. Well, if you want to help the subject matter, you know, asking questions helps because it tells me, hey, If I preach on this subject, I know at least that person is going to be interested in that message. And so, you know, just a little idea, something to throw out there. If you do, if you have certain subject matter you'd like to hear about, something you'd like to learn, ask the question. And when you ask the question, you know, I've heard people go, why doesn't anybody, why don't you ever preach on this? Didn't know you were interested. I'll gladly preach on that. You know, once I get an idea... I'm ready to go. You know, I know how to study. I've got my methods for putting messages together, but sometimes the biggest challenge is what am I supposed to preach this week? And so, you know, y'all, y'all can help there. But when you ask questions, okay, when, when you're asking questions, it's giving you an opportunity, opportunity to learn. And so we see there in Proverbs chapter one, verse five, you know, it mentioned that he's going to, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. Okay, a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So when it comes to learning, just two verses later, in verse 7 of Proverbs chapter 1, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Listen, I'm all for knowledge. I think we ought to want to learn as much as we can. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be smart. There's nothing wrong with wanting to know a lot about a certain subject. But if you want to have the beginning of knowledge... Where you need to start, it needs to be with the fear of the Lord. That's the first thing you need to learn about. Well, what does that mean? You know, how is the fear of the Lord, you know, how is that what kind of kicks off knowledge? Well, when you have a fear of God, okay, you know what that's going to cause you to do? It's going to cause you to say, you know, what does his word say? And this, this is, this is the word of God. This is God's word. This is the final authority in everything. And you know what? When I want knowledge, not just so I can look smart, I want to do things right. I want to raise my family right. I want to have the right kind of marriage. I want, I want to do everything right. I want to do my finances right. I want to, I want to do things the right way, morally, ethically, all those things. And when you have a fear of the Lord, 
Hey, in other words, we understand that God is the one in charge. God's the one who knows everything. It's going to cause us to want to do things His way. And so now we get started in the right direction. It's going to point us to the very Word of God. In, in Psalms 138, verse 2, it says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Y'all see that right there? Now, how does that make sense? All right. You know, God, he is almighty. He is an authority. How is his word magnified above his name? Okay. So what does that mean? Well, that means if somebody comes to you and says, God told me that you should do this or that, but the word of God says opposite, who do we listen to? Do we listen to God or do we listen to God's word? Well, we listen to God's word. Well, I'm going to follow God. I'm going to listen to God. Well, here's the problem with that. Satan himself can be transformed into an angel of light. Just because somebody says God told them something doesn't mean God actually told them something. And God's magnified his word above his name. You know why? Because God is holy. God is perfect. And if God says something, God cannot go back on his word. And God holds himself accountable to his word. He doesn't just change his mind at a whim. He doesn't just say one thing and then years later say, you know what, I've totally changed my mind. You know, he doesn't do like the dispensationalist teach where God had all these different plans and man kept messing it up. And so God did plan B and plan C and all that. No, God's always had one plan. He's always known what he was going to do and he's never changed it. He's got, he, and so he, and he's given us his word and our God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so if somebody comes along and says, you know what, it's 2017, this doesn't apply anymore, but God's word says that it does. You know what we do? We follow God's word and the fear of the Lord is what causes us to do that. Well, listen, I want to get this right. Who do I follow? The person who's saying God told them or God's word. And when you do, when you have that fear of God, it's going to cause you to take God's word very serious. And listen, no matter what the world tells you, when you do things according to God's word, you're going to be fine. You're going to do just great. This, the fear of the Lord, it's the beginning of knowledge. It's where you ought to start. Proverbs, or Psalms chapter 12, verse 6 says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. You've got those that are out there. You've got these smart people, you know, people who look smart, that talk smart, that use big words that maybe some of us have to get a dictionary to be able to understand, and they will try to tell us the Word of God's not pure. You've got these preachers that are out there that say, oh, I believe in the inspiration of the Scriptures in the originals. But there are no originals. There are no original manuscripts. All we have are copies of copies of copies. And therefore, if there are mistakes in our Bible, then that means God didn't do what He said He was going to do there in Psalms. He said He was going to preserve His words. Well, they're His words, but they're not pure. No, it says His words are pure words. They are, they are pure words, and He was going to preserve them from this generation forever and listen, if you think you found it somewhere other than the King James Bible, you can come talk to me about it, but I believe it's here in this King James Bible. And it is. It's the final authority. And listen, I don't care how smart somebody looks. I don't care how smart somebody sounds. If they come along and say, nope, that's a mistake in the Bible, I'm going to go tell them to jump in a lake. And I'm not going to listen to what they had to say. I'm going to follow the Word of God. You know why? Because I have a, I have a healthy fear of the Lord. I am afraid of looking stupid. I've got a slight fear of people who I know are a lot smarter than me and maybe can make me look like an idiot. You know what? I'm more scared of the Lord. And so if they come and say there's a mistake and they say all these things that make them sound smarter than me, I'm still going to listen to what the Bible says. I'm going to say, you know what? That's not a mistake. That's supposed to be in the Bible. God promised He would preserve His Word and I believe He did it here. And that's where we start. The Word of God is where we learn how to find eternal life. 1 John 5, 13, These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. We say here that we know we're going to heaven. We go around door to door asking people, 
or, or tell, trying to tell people how they can know for sure they're on their, their way to heaven. Well, how can we make such a big claim like that? Why? Because we believe we have the Word of God. The Word of God told us how we can know that we have eternal life. And there's a lot of people out there that I believe are saved. I've talked to many people that when I listen, when I listen to them, I get their testimony. I believe that person is saved, but they many times do not know that they're saved. They're not sure. You know why? Because they never increased in learning after they got saved. A lot of these people, they truly got saved, but they ended up going to a church that taught them you could lose your salvation, taught them you can't know for sure. And, and I like to, and with those people, I like to take the time and take the Bible and show them, look, this is how you know. Listen, is this what you did? You know, if you did, you can know you're saved. You know, who cares what your priest says? You know, who cares what a pastor says? God said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believed in your heart, if you were trusting in his work and not your work, you can know that you're saved. You can know that. You can have knowledge of that. Know for sure. And listen, that. And, but many people today, they struggle with that. You know why? Because they don't necessarily have a fear of the Lord. They've got a fear of their church. They've got a fear of a religion or what other people say. And they're all over the place in their beliefs. They can't get any victory. But you know what the Bible says? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And so I believe when we do, when we realize and we have that fear of the Lord, it's going to send us running to the scriptures. And you, there's a lot of things that we can learn about. There's a lot of books. Just go to a library sometime and look at all the books that are there. And you know what? There's not a book in the world you can't read where you won't learn something, but you know, it's possible to learn the wrong things. You know, if you want, you can go and you can try to straighten out your life by reading a Dr. Phil book or a Joel Osteen book or somebody like that. But you're going to learn a lot of wrong things. You're going to learn, but it's going to be the wrong things. And, you know, if we're going to learn, we're a whole lot better off learning from the right things, learning from the Word of God. And so that is, that is the beginning of knowledge. The Word of God is where we learn how to have fulfillment and happiness. John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. God wants us to have an abundant life. He doesn't want us to be miserable. But you know, we, we live in a world today where people think they can just do nothing. They can be lazy. No effort at all. You know, you've got the millennial generation that just thinks the world owes them a paycheck, but they don't want to work. You know, they don't want to do any labor. They're just, they're just lazy, and they have these great expectations of all these wonderful things that should happen in their life. But the truth is, if we're going to have an abundant life, we've got, we've got to follow the Word of God. We've got to follow Christ. We've got to have Him in our life. And you've got people today that just... They, they don't want to do that. Just lazy about everything. You've got Christians that will go week after week after week, and the only Bible they get is what they hear from the preacher. They don't, they're not reading it on their own. They're not studying their Bible. And listen, I'm going to tell you another reason too, another thing that encourages me. And I, I'm not just saying this. You know, Don't just come asking me questions just to make yourself look good now. All right. But if you're reading your Bible regularly, you're going to have some questions. Not everything that you see in this Bible is real simple. Some stuff is tough. And when a person, if a person is reading the Bible regular, they're going to have questions. And I do, I'm encouraged when people ask questions about what I've been preaching, but I'm really encouraged when they ask questions and I can tell it's because they were reading the Bible. And now I do get a little discouraged when people ask questions because they're confused because, you know, they were listening to some TV preacher or something. You know, that, that's not, not, those aren't good questions. But when you're asking questions because of the preaching you hear here, because of reading the Bible, that is, that is a good thing. And yet people today, they're making no effort in their life. No effort to be better Christians. No effort to make sure they're right. You see the stuff that goes on in these churches. And, and you know, some of us, we look at that and think, how does this happen? How do the people in the church not get up and walk out when a preacher preaches something like that? Because they don't know. They're not making any effort in their life. They're not increasing in learning. They haven't read their Bible. They haven't done one bit of that. Therefore, they're, they're going to struggle. They're going to miss out. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So we see that 
you know, the fear of the Lord, it's the beginning of knowledge. But then here it says too, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. What is that? What is that saying right there? Well, I believe uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, the, when it comes to the word of God, you know, we find wisdom in there. But the way we find that wisdom is you know, we don't read it and then all of a sudden we get it, we understand it. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's, that's the beginning, okay? So the fear of the God, it will cause us to obey the Scriptures. Well, man, sometimes I don't understand why God wants me to do this or I don't understand why God doesn't want me to do this, but you know what? I fear God. He knows more than I do, and so I'm going to do it. You know, that's wisdom when you do that. Your child that will listen to you as a parent just because they trust you, because they, you know, they believe you, that's a wise child, okay? Most children, they don't understand the dangers that are out there, okay? When you as a parent, you tell your child you're not just allowed to run the streets freely, you don't tell your little five or six-year-old kid, you don't go into great detail about what some pervert could do to them out there, okay? You're not, you don't tell your kids that. You shouldn't need to tell your kids that. But if your child is wise, they will, they'll listen to you. You know, they'll say, okay, all right, I'm, I'm going to trust you. I'm not just going to go wherever I want. I'm not, gonna, I'm not just going to do whatever I want to do. And here it says, you know, that fear of the Lord, it's the beginning of wisdom, but the knowledge of the holy is understanding. That person who has been obedient, the person who did the right thing first, they're the ones who end up getting understanding. You know how most people are today when a preacher preaches something that they don't like? When he shows, hey, the Bible says you shouldn't do this. You know what they do? They say, well, I don't, I don't get that. I don't understand that. I don't understand why that's a sin. I don't understand why God has a problem with that. You, you, know, you convince me. Once I understand it, I'll obey it. That's not how it works. You're supposed to obey it. And then later, God will give you understanding. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. If you're going to go and you're going to be guilty of all these things first, if you're going to go break all these laws of God, you're never going to understand it. It's those who obey it, I believe, eventually understand it. And there was a lot of rules that my parents had growing up that I didn't completely understand, but I obeyed them. And now that I'm older, I understand it. Now that I'm older, I get it. Now after, but I got that after I obeyed it. And many people make the foolish mistake of not doing what the Bible clearly says to do because they don't understand it. Well, you know what? You don't need to understand it. But I believe if you just go ahead and by faith obey it, first off, you're showing wisdom right there. Just trusting God when you don't know what to do. That's just called wisdom. Listen, seeking counsel. That shows wisdom. A person who's just, you know, we, do, we think wisdom means we've got all the answers. No, wisdom, it, sometimes it just, it's just recognizing reality. I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go seek counsel. I'm going to go talk to somebody. That's wisdom right there. That, show, that shows real wisdom. And a person who says, I don't understand everything about the Bible, but I'm going to obey it anyway. Right there, you got the beginning of wisdom, and I believe eventually you'll get the understanding. Eventually you'll learn. And so, you know, there, there are, there's some things you just can't explain. There's some things you do, you can't explain it to your kids right now. They wouldn't understand it. And they really don't need to, but they still need to obey it. And so when we come to that realization that the Word of God is in fact God's Word, we can just rely on it by faith, and we don't necessarily have to understand everything about it. But many times, young people, they make, that, they make foolish choices, rebelling against their parents' rules and authority simply because they don't understand or they disagree with the rules. And you know what? I've had this conversation so many times with people where it's like, I'll show them what the Bible says, and they'll say, well, I disagree with that. Do you all realize that's not an argument? You know, go try that with a police officer sometime when he pulls you over. And it's like, you know, tell, he tells you, you're speeding. The speed limit was 45, you're going 55. Well, I disagree with that speed limit, officer. You think he's going to care about that one bit? He's not going to care. And you know what? Yeah, you might disagree with what the Bible says, but that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. 
It's still God's word. It's still the final authority. It's still right. And you know what? You just need to do what it says. That, that, is, that is not an argument. And I am, I'm getting sick of that argument from people. I disagree with that. Sorry, it's what the Bible says. So you're wrong. And, any, and I, I'll admit, there's things in the Bible I disagree with. You know, I disagree with turn the other cheek. You know, I, I disagree with bless them that curse you. I'll just admit it right now. I, I, I disagree with that. But I'm wrong. And so, and there are, there's a, and I'll, I'll follow it best I can, as long as I can stay in the spirit, not in the flesh. Because my flesh, I don't care, my flesh disagrees with that. And I disagree with a lot of the laws that we have in this state. I disagree with forcing drivers to wear a seatbelt. If I want to get killed in a car wreck, that's my business. All right? It's not the police officer's business if I do that, you know. If I want to roll through a stop sign when nobody's around, I think I should be able to roll through that stop sign. I'm not hurting anybody. Uh, that I disagree with that rule. However, uh, I'm going to try to follow that the, be- the best I can. And so, because uh, I don't want to take it. And they're not, they're not going to care that I disagree. They are the authority. And so, uh, you know, learning the scriptures, you know, learning, increasing in, not, increasing in learning, it's, it's going to take work. In Ecclesiastes 12, 11, it says the words of the wise are as goads as, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Nothing puts me to sleep better than reading. You know, it does. It, it gets me tired. And it was, I tell you, it was a mistake. I put that couch in my office and I like to read on that and... I haven't fallen asleep on it yet, but I've had to get up many times and go back to the desk because I've almost fallen asleep. And reading does that. It, it is. It's a weariness of the flesh. Verse 13, though, says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. It's going to be work learning the commandments of God. But you have a responsibility to learn them. We do. We think many times that we're covered if we just don't know the law. You know, if we don't know what the Bible says, we can't be held accountable for it. But you know what? It's not God's fault if you're just lazy and you won't read His Word. You need to read the Bible. You know, and our our government, they don't care. You know, none of us in here understand the tax code. None of us do. I mean, and the tax code, apparently, it's, it's massive volumes of books. And you know what? The IRS doesn't care If we break a law financially because we didn't understand it, they don't care. They'll hold hold us accountable for it. You know, we're supposed to learn. We're supposed to go to somebody who knows. You know, nowadays, thank the Lord, you know, we have software that will do all the thinking for us because nobody's smart enough to understand the tax code. It's that complicated and that crooked, by the way. I probably shouldn't say too much. I don't want to get the IRS breathing down my neck. But... You know, so they don't they don't take as an excuse, and we shouldn't either. But uh, you know, it is it's important though that we learn. It's going to take work, and we do we need to understand how important it is for us to know the scriptures. We've got to take it serious. You as an individual, you need to take it serious and say, you know what, I do. I need to understand the scriptures. I need to study. I need to do whatever. Listen, there are some things that I've done just for fun. To help me learn. I, I do. I try to keep myself challenged. One of the things I did years ago, I've never preached anything along these lines because it would probably bore everybody to tears. But you want to know one of the most enlightening studies I ever did? I got, it was years ago, I got uh, a family tree maker program and I started doing my family tree and I took it as far as I could and I, I got tired of it. And, I, and then, just for fun, I started a new family tree and I started with Adam. And I started going through the Bible, through the genealogies, adding everybody, you know, and I, and I did it I did it all the way up to Jesus. And then I started, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to just go directly from Adam to Jesus. But then I started kind of branching it out all over the place. And I started reading through all those genealogies and looking where people fit. And while that sounds horribly boring, I'm telling you, it taught me a lot about the Bible. It helped me understand a lot of things. I mean, it, it really did the the things that I got out of doing that study. And I, and I couldn't get up here and do that because 
unless you're actually, you know, plugging the names in in the different places in the family tree and doing, all, you know, it would I would bore you to tears talking about it, especially as weird as some of those names are that we can't even pronounce. But when you start putting it together, it does it it it, it helps. I would encourage you to do that just for fun sometimes because it gives you a, a deeper understanding of the Bible and why a lot of things are in the Bible. And I, I think we ought to do stuff like that. Well, what, what's the point? It's called increasing in learning. Sometimes we ought to just learn something just to learn something. And I believe the Word of God is the most important thing we need to learn. But you know what? Learning about earthly things is good too. You know, there's nothing wrong with learning about history or science or mathematics, uh, you know, music, uh, you know, what, whatever. There's nothing wrong with learning about those things. We can increase our abilities and skills through knowledge. You're, you know, you can be more likely to get a better job. You know, you have a better job, make more money, give more money. That's right. You know, that's more you can get accomplished. There's a lot of things that you can do. We can be more effective in whatever we do. The Bible says in Colossians 3.23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. I mean, it, we would all agree if we're doing something for God, shouldn't we do the very best that we possibly can? Shouldn't we try to be the best in the world at what we do? But that means we're going to have to practice. We're going to have to try harder. We're going to have to increase in learning. Whatever it is you do in your life, whatever area you're involved in, there's nothing wrong with you wanting to be the best at it and to, and to know the most about that subject. But you know, many times God gives us special desires and interests in certain areas. Turn over to Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter. How many have in here have ever heard of Bezalel and Aholiab? I think that's how you say their names. Anybody ever heard of those guys? Bezalel and Aholiab? Well, while most of you might not know who those guys are, all of you have heard of their work. And look what it says in Exodus chapter 31, in verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in cutting of stones, and to set them, and in carving of timber, to work in all manner of workmanship. And I beheld, and I have given with him Aholiab, the son of Ahishamach of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee, the tabernacle of the congregation, and the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is thereupon, and the furniture of the tabernacle, and the table, and his furniture, and the pure candlestick with all his furniture, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture and the laver and his foot and the claws of the service and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, the garments of his sons to minister the priest's office and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place according to all that I have commanded thee shall they do. You notice the Ark of the Testimony, the Ark of the Covenant was mentioned in there. These guys that made the Ark of the Covenant, God gave them a special ability. God Put the spirit of wisdom in there. That spirit of knowledge. He gave them that ability. Listen, I can't carve anything. I've said before, I can't make a figure out of Play-Doh, let alone stone or gold or anything like that. And these guys did. And we all know what the Ark of the Covenant is. We've all heard about the Ark of the Covenant. These guys that made that, God gave them, God put in them a special ability. And you know what? This is something we need to think about as parents. Listen, if, if your children seem to show maybe exceptional skill in a certain area, you know what? I think we ought to try to, I think you ought to try to do something with that. You know, you ought to motivate them in that, you know, if, whether it be artistic abilities or music abilities, whatever it is, if they're just really smart, if you got a kid that learns good, man, shove as much knowledge as you can into that head of theirs. Because God may have given them a special ability because He has a great work that He wants them to do. And so we, we, ought to, we, ought to, we ought to do something with that. God had put this in these guys. God wants those who have special skills too to share their knowledge with others. If you, we're not going to read If you turn over to Exodus 35, those guys went and they taught other people how to do these things. And they were the ones that made the materials 
And that special ability and that knowledge that God gave them, these guys were able to take it and pass it on to other people. And you know what? That's what we're supposed to be doing. One of the best things to help somebody learn, you know, is to actually teach. Because you do, when you, when, you know, I learned this when I was teaching in school. It's one thing to know a subject good enough where you can get through it, but you have to know it on another level to be able to teach it to someone else. And so, you know, teachers, a lot of times, one of the reasons they're smart, it's not just because they started out smart, but they got smarter through teaching. And that is, and so that is a good thing. Passing on that information you have is a good thing. It's helpful and it will help you increase in learning and it will help other people to increase in learning. And so you, if, if you have a child that's gifted in a certain area, you know, motivate them, you know, help it, try to help it increase. If God gave them that gift, it's because God has a plan for them. And I promise you that plan isn't for them to be lazy. And then it's like, you know, it's like some people it just seems like they're naturally good at things and they don't have to try hard, but you know what? Everybody ought to work hard. And if, if you do, if you have a child that picks stuff up real easy, well, you know what? Make it hard for them. You know, start, I mean, really, I mean, push them, push them. You know, don't be content with them just being average or better than most. I mean, push them to do better, to do more. God doesn't want any of us being lazy. And so uh, we need to, we need to just learn whatever we can. In Exodus chapter 10 and verse 24 through 27, as they were getting ready to leave Egypt, Pharaoh, he's, he kept kind of making deals with Moses and he, he would tell him, fine, you can go, but only the men could go. And then you, know, you have to leave your families. And then one time he told him, you can go, but you got to leave all your possessions behind. And Moses told him, he said, you know what, we're taking everything. We're not even going to leave a hoof behind. And th- I love what Moses said, because when we get out there, we don't know what God is going to ask of us. And Moses was saying, whatever God asks of us, we want to be able to give it to him. And you know what? If your kids have this attitude, I don't want to learn this because I'm never going to use it. You know what? You need to teach them. Listen, you don't know what God has in store for you. You learn everything you can. You get everything you can get out of school. You get everything you can possibly get out of education. Why? Because the more we have, the more we have the ability to give to God. We don't know which direction he's going to send us. We've got, you know, sometimes people, you know, you'll talk about in uh, 1 Timothy, it goes through the qualifications of a bishop. If a man desire a bishop, he desire a good work, but it says a bishop must be blameless, and it goes on and it gives all these qualifications. And sometimes you've got people out there, well, I don't, I'm not planning on being a pastor, so you know what? I'm not going to worry about that husband of one wife thing. Well, you know what? What if God wants you to be one later? You know what? We all had to have the attitude... I do. I want to make sure, you know, all my options are open. That I can do that. I can do anything God would want. I don't ever want to do anything to limit myself. I'm not going to be a pothead because I don't want to dumb myself down. Because what if God wants me to be a scientist? You know, what if God wants me to be a great theologian? I don't need to be dumbing myself down with drugs. But a lot of people, ah, I'm not going to do that. I'm never going to be a teacher. I'm never going to be a professor. I'm never going to do this. So who cares if I do that? Listen, you don't know what God's going to want from you. It's not your body. You've been bought with a price. You belong to God. And so you know what? You just need to keep, you make, make it where whatever God wants, I'm ready. I'm going to learn everything I can. I'm going to increase as much as I can so I can do more for God. And so do it. Learn so you can be that. Learn so you can be a teacher. Not a ruler, but a teacher. It says in... Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. For whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and teach others, they shall be least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them shall be the greatest. We ought to be trying to pass things on. We ought to be trying to teach others. And uh, 2 Timothy uh, 2, verse 2 says, And the things that thou hast learned of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. See that passing on of information, that passing on of knowledge. How can we pass anything on if we don't ever gain anything? That increasing and learning is something that we all ought to be doing and we should never stop. We should never stop. You never know when an opportunity might come where you you could contribute, where you could help, 
Whenever there's a decision, maybe in the church it needs to be made, maybe a financial decision, it helps. We have some people who know a few things about finances, who just know about something. You, you don't know. You don't know what knowledge is going to come in handy. And listen, you know, knowing how to beat the latest video game is not the thing. Listen, you need to sit down, all right? Don't get up anymore, please. You need, you need, to, under, you need to learn as much as you can. You've got to, and many people today, they just don't care. It's just, ah, you know, whatever I can get is all, you know, I, I don't, I, they, they just don't care. No desire to grow, no desire to learn, and Christians shouldn't have that attitude. And all of us, we all have a responsibility to learn. And you never know where certain information could maybe someday come in handy. And we know God isn't pleased with laziness. Listen, we need to do a lot less TV watching and a lot more reading. A lot, you know, a lot more of that. A lot less sitting around surfing the web and a little more time, you know, actually just, you know, learning something, getting better at something, working on a skill, developing that skill, getting better at it. Our world is getting dumber by the day. I, it's ridiculous. And people in churches are getting dumber by the day when it comes to scriptural things. It's a, It's amazing. How little people know. And there is, there is a great cost. And people are paying for their ignorance. We are paying for it by the people that we're electing. We're, pay, we're paying big time for it. And listen, when we stand before God someday, us saying, I didn't know, is not going to be an excuse. And so you say, Brother Tom, all right, you, you convinced me I need to increase in learning. You know, where, so where do I start? You know, well... Start reading your Bible every day. Start reading through that Bible. And then after you get through it, read through it again. Just keep going. You know, I mean, just, just you know, listen. Listen to the preaching. You know, I mean, we, we've got all our sermons online. You know, if you're not here for it, go and listen to those things. You know, listen to good preaching. Go get some, you know, I, I, I've got a bunch of books in my office. I've got books in there that you can borrow as long as you give them back. You know, I mean, I, I, and, you know, you know, read those things. You know, learn something. You know, what are your interests? What abilities do you have? What are you good at? Okay, develop those things. Get better at it. You know, Miss Hazel, she does her crocheting thing. I, I couldn't do that in a thousand years. You know, there's this, it, it's, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that stuff. God did not, God gave me zero artistic abilities. See, even with computers and everything, I can't even design flyers and things like that. I just, I can't do that. I haven't got an artistic bone in my body. But some people do. And you know what? They use it. And you know what? Challenge yourself. Try, try, to, get, you know, try to get better at those things. Whatever your talent is, if it's music, whatever, use it for God. Increase in learning. And so with that, let's all stand together.